you know what I'm saying? I was rooting for Canelo all the way, but it was a good fight. It was a close fight. So uh, we're trying to call somebody. Our bro is, um, I'm, I'm trying to get this back too. You know, uh, recently I heard uh, Melinda Gates and Bill Gates, they, they're they breaking up. So, yeah, you know, yeah, I created a little tender. Relationship. Like it's a girl that just wants to, like she. Are we talking sugar mama or just. No, 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 okay, no. I'm okay. not talking sugar mama. Oh, I'm talking oh. like a girl that's just on her shit and she's like, uh, would you be comfortable with that? Letting her just come yeah. on, come on. Let's let's she go to let's, let's go to the mall, Darwin. I'll let you. I'll shop. show you and shit. <laughs> All right, ladies and gentlemen, what is Gucci Manucci's? We are live. Welcome to another episode of the Half Court Podcast. You already know, man. This is what we like to call the revamp. Now you already know I got my guy AV on the side. You know what I'm saying? We getting this thing cracking. So today. We're going to pretty much talk about a little bit of everything. We're going to talk about culture. We're going to talk about last night's fight, which is, it was pretty good. And we're going to talk about meme coin. Like, this shit is making everybody some money. So, without further ado, let's get this started. AV, what's good with you, bro? I'm out here, man. We out here, man. Living uh, life. Yes. Uh, we had Cinco de Mayo here a couple Ooh, of days boy. ago. Boy, we it got went, crazy. We went crazy. Oh, man. Uh, I can imagine the shop vibes over there, man. Shit, oh, yeah. you know what I'm saying? But, man, uh, let's get this started, man. Uh, this is a lot of pressure because we got to deliver. This is something different. We're going to have more fun. You know, last episode, what we did was give you guys an update on what we're trying to do. You know, have more fun with it. Uh, we're going to be implementing phone calls, so stay tuned for that. And uh, once again, I want to shout out my guy, Marco. That motherfucker's been on it from the jump giving us uh for some reason advice. your comments don't show on the on the youtube sometimes but yeah. i think it's because you're vulgar and, and yeah marco if you want your comments to show please blur out the nigga blur out the fuck bro, blow out the bitch or whatever easy you, now the algorithms and uh, yeah like crazy. blur out you know what i'm saying like put the little little you know the little yeah so don't think we're hating and fucking not showing nah, you we don't messages. do that shit bro we don't do that shit but man let's get this started man i think Hmm. Let's talk about I think we need to start uh, With just a little bit about us Because I don't <clears> think we've talked to the people Really about our background We've talked about photography And shit like mm -hmm. that But um, Talk to them about Puerto Rico man I think that's an interesting fact About you That a lot of people um, Yeah when they They know They're like Where's he from? In Puerto Rico That's interesting Yeah it's definitely interesting uh, You know I was born there um, Born in Bayamon and man, I, I, it's, it's crazy, man. It's crazy to think that I was born in that Island. And I think it's a blessing because of the fact that really there's so much talent out there in that small Island. There's so much to do. And the culture is just amazing, man. I think in general, the Latin culture is just something that is unique that like, it's crazy. You know, yesterday I'm watching the, did you watch the fight yesterday, by the way? I didn't. I really don't engage in sports, man. I, I'm, I'm watching that shit, bro. And as I'm watching that fight, uh, Pepe Aguilar and her daughter, his yeah. daughter, cantaron. And yeah. That shit was like, it gave me goosebumps. Because, like, I, I've been, you know, I visited Mexico last year. And that shit was amazing. Because I got, not only was I in the tourist spot, but I went to the hood. You know what I'm saying? And that shit felt amazing, you know? Like, I was like, this the culture's rich. You so know when you were saying? watching it on TV, you kind of got I was like, nostalgia. Damn. Like, you started remembering I was like, damn, shit. bro, I fuck with the culture heavy. Because it's just like, it's just a lot of, like, vibes and like those mariachis and all that shit bro it's 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 amazing bro like I, i'm very fascinated with culture bro like i really one of the things to do on my list is to go to tokyo to get that like mm -hmm. different culture shock you know what i'm saying to see their culture and like go to colombia and see their culture which is we all have similarities when it comes to latin culture but there's we're very different bro yeah even, even mexicans i think like from different states we're yeah. different so man what can i tell you bro i always recommend everybody man to go to puerto rico as their uh, destination for vacation just because, you know, there's, I feel like you can go anywhere, you know, wherever you stay at in the island, it doesn't matter if it's in the capital or in the, the north corner, south corner, wherever you stay, there's something to do. And it's something like it's, so you, you, you said you're from where? I'm from Bayamon. Well, I was born in Bayamon and I was raised in Tuala, which is really close to Bayamon. The what are some uh, maybe famous uh, people on TV that are from there? Um, man, I think Nyengua Flow is from Bayamon. Farruko is from Bayamon. So uh, there's pre I'm pretty sure there's more, but 
right off the bat, those are the two people that I know where where I grew up, you know, there's a couple of people too. And is it small enough to where like you could see them motherfuckers at the store and shit? You could, yeah, you could. Okay. The thing is, like, it's they they love, you know, they love going out and, and doing regular shit, you know? Yeah. Um, I remember the like Eto when he was in his prime, bro, like he was we was at the club and I like when we left the club and we were outside like eating fucking hot dogs and shit, he was there just eating a hot dog too. You know what I'm saying? So I went up to him. I was like, Hey, what's up, bro? Can I get a picture and shit? He was hella humble. You know what I'm saying? So it happens from time to time. You can find those artists, those Puerto Rico artists, bro. Just so life. what you're saying is like at some point, bad bunny and Anuel were like that too. Yeah. Like, yeah. 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 Like yeah. You could yeah. ride them. You could see him riding I mean, around. It, it, it went bad bunny, bro. Like he, when he uh, filmed his video, Tamo Bien, he was literally just grabbing like a VHS camera and just like going to his beach where he grew up and shit. Like everybody was like, Oh shit. Like, and I mean, Carol G the other day, she was in El Morro, which is like a very tourist area and it was beautiful. And she was just there. Like I'm fucking here. I love this place. You know what I'm saying? So that, so how was the uh, beef and shit over there? Like, is it, it's not a, there's not a thing with the Puerto Rican artists, like the, 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 like Puerto Rican trap, you know how well, here it, is it like, used to be. It used to be on some flame shit. I would say probably ten years ago, it was like like artists were beefing hard and dissing I think each other. Now they they've learned, yeah. And it was like it got like I would say ten to fifteen years ago, like it got really rough. Where it's like one of the biggest artists fucking was like, I'm gonna go and be a pastor. I can't mm. do this shit. But he was he was heavy. Like his what, what's his name? Hector El Fader. His name was so big that. People, when they did a documentary on him, and people would say, like, every time this this uh, motherfucker would pull up at the club, he would be with 70 other people. 70? 70, bro, like, deep. Jesus Christ. You know what I'm saying? Everybody with the sticks on them, you know what I'm saying? So, it got very heated, and he got in a couple of, uh, a war with Don Omar and, like, a couple of other artists, but uh, now it's, like, they know that, like, let's keep it professional. Like, if I'm going to diss So, you, back then, was or why, 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 they were just hating on each other because of the, there was collab, a, like, I'm the king well, type that's shit, the thing, bro. or you, you, was it street politics? I think both. You know, you, there's a thing where sometimes maybe in a song you say something that's like, bro, what? Like, no. you, you trying to disrespect me or, you know what I'm saying? Like, uh, out of, like, ego and shit, you know mm-hmm. what I'm saying? So, it, it would turn into, like, all right, let, let's go to let's go to war. So, they would start lyrically and then disrespect each other, and then that would turn into, like, the street shit, you mm-hmm. know what I'm saying? But now I feel like today there might be some beef, but they know how to keep it music to music. And the crazy thing is how they were able to take it out of that and take it to the level that they're at now, because right now Bad Bunny is a fucking... Icon. And even Anuel, like, his yeah, videos have fucking... Icon. The the top artists, bro, right now, obviously, is Bad Bunny, Anuel Osuna, J. Cortez, Mike Tower. They why, are, why do you think it, 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 it did that? I think, bro, now the internet, a lot of people have access to it, especially like uh, the Latin countries. You know, I feel like they're making it more accessible, where back then, when you talk about Daddy Yankees era, like, it's like nobody really had access but us. You know what I'm saying? Because... Back in, you had to have, like, contracts to get a phone. You have to sign a two-year contract. You had to pay $400 up front. So now it's like they're doing month to month, and sometimes they'll even have free promos. I don't know how it is in other countries, but I feel like now it's just accessible. Like, the Internet's accessible to everybody. Now. Back then, it was still the CD era and shit. You exactly. had to pass it, it hand-to-hand. Mm-hmm. And yep. if, if we did see Daddy Yankee, it was on, like, Despierta America. Exactly. Or- so it's a lot, bro. It's a lot that has to do, and I'm, 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 I'm very proud of the movement and how they've gotten this far. And like you said, they're, you know, they're the big, these big artists do numbers like crazy. Like some of them do bigger numbers than actual hip hop yeah. artists. Like I'm like, yeah, it's fucking that's crazy. crazy. You know what I'm saying? So that tells you the I, I movement. I think maybe what has to do with it too. I think Spanish is the most spoken language all 20, around the world. So 21 countries, bro. That means that everybody can listen to Bad Bunny, or you know, within those. The yeah. the slang might be different, but Bro, I can pretty much understand. I'm pretty what sure fuck. if this nigga goes like to to Japan, China, or something. Yeah, yeah, I'm pretty sure. Fucking, you have fans over there. You know what I'm saying? Music, because, music, really at the end of the day is like a, a language itself. And mm-hmm. then if you can understand the lyrics, dope. But yeah, it's just a vibe and shit. So overall, bro, I mean, I think it's it it was good growing up in Puerto Rico, just because I think it teaches us, you know, that. Thick skin, that tough, you know. So shit is rough, is what yeah, you're saying. Yeah, it's rough. Like, I mean, why? Why? If we're part of the, if Puerto I mean, Rico is part it, of the it, United it, States, why is it? I mean, it's one of those where it's like, uh, unfortunately, we haven't had a leader that wants to be. All right, I want to make this country great. I want to make you know the island fucking amazing. They always talk about 
you know, they're going to do it, but they end up stealing money, taking money. And it's been like that for decades now. You know what I'm saying? It's always the blue, red, blue, red, blue, red. And like, I wish they can just select somebody different. That's not the blue and red, blue and red, but it's like, is it just corruption? Corruption. Yeah. But we're just brainwashed. You know what I'm saying? We're just brainwashed to think. Cause I grew up a uh, blue, 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 uh, you know, like the blue, blue. And now I'm like, nah, hell no. Nah, what, what was that the that blue ain't. talking about? Well, it's more of like Republican, Democrat kind of thing, you know what I'm okay. saying? So it's like that. Um, so, I mean, hopefully we get this leader right now. It's more of the same bullshit, you know. Uh, so your family basically got fed up and said, fuck it, we're going to the States because yep. shit over here is not cracking. It's not, yeah, it's not, bro. I think the only way I can go back to Puerto Rico and I, I can live there, which I want to, was if I become an entrepreneur. And I mean, obviously I'm in route to do that, but... Becoming an entrepreneur, I think that's, you know, I can definitely live a comfortable life over there and fucking be, be cool. Cause I feel like over there, despite it being territory United States, you know, it's very easy to get distracted and have fun. It's just very easy. Just the culture, you see the atmosphere, you can just smell it in here type shit. You yeah, know what yeah. I'm saying? So definitely, but. So that, what are you saying that you'd get distracted quick over there? If I'm, yeah, if I were to go right now, let's say I wanted to go and just work a job and hustle, make video and, you know. I still feel like I'll get distracted just because I have a lot of friends and like too much there's shit to do. Too, too much shit to do. Yeah. So I, I definitely was like, huh, I'm not ready for it yet. But that, that eventually is going to be the goal by uh, real estate over there and shit. So people, a lot of your friends over there are still stuck in that cycle, would you say? Some um, of them. But to be honest, bro, they, they're happy. They're happy. And I really don't I don't knock them for that. Like I, I, I catched up with one homie and he's over there. Shout out to Monchito. And he's like, shit, bro, I live in an apartment close to the beach. 350 a month. I'm working as a cook. I, I'm I'm happy. Shit, I don't need anything. I'm single. I don't need no relationship. I just mm. want to, you know, go deep in that little things. Ooh. So I was like, damn boy, <laughs> you live in the bachelor's life. But how old is he though? Uh 30. Oh, 30. Shit. Yeah, he's, so he's like, I'm like, bro, if you're happy, I don't yeah. I mean, what can I what can I tell you? You know what I'm saying? Like And that's the thing that I admire from a lot of people that are just happy with where they're at. Cause I don't know if I ever fucking be happy where I'm at, bro. It's bro. I feel like it's one of those where, to be honest, like clearly I'm not happy where I'm at. But I feel like sometimes when we get up there, like I feel like we're gonna get to that point where, like, are we really happy? But at the same time, it's like all I'm looking for is freedom. Freedom. And yeah. Money is where it's at, to be honest. And I'm yeah. not looking at it like, oh, I'm I'm focused on money, money, money. I'm focused on freedom. Like I want to invest, travel, you know, help help people in general. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Like. And just keep creating a community where we all can just keep winning and shit. That's yeah, really that's what it really comes the down key. To. But yeah, bro, I'm enough about me, man. Let's talk about your culture, man. Where you from, and and kind of go from there, bro. Man, I got here when I was seven years old, bro. So I think that I'm a Oklahoman. Like, yeah, seven years old till now. Um, what do you remember when you were seven? As far as living over there, man, uh, I remember going to school over there. I remember that. I think I went to school first, second, and then third grade. I did it here. Mm-hmm. No, I did first, second, third, and then I had to repeat third grade because mm. when I got here, I didn't speak English. So mm. they were like, nah, motherfucker, you got to yeah. do third grade again. So yeah. they held me back. Uh, what part of Mexico? El Valle de Juarez. So this is crazy. It's, it's close to the border, huh? Right next to El Paso. So it's like basically I would see – People crossing the river literally from where I lived. Like if you just went deep into the mm-hmm. labores, like which is where they, the crops and shit are at. Yeah, the river was there, so you could see people like actually crossing just from. But it wasn't bad like that, like it is now. Back yeah. then, that was fucking what twenty something or what? What changed? Mm, I'm not sure. To be honest, I think restrictions just started getting more crazy, and mm. probably the drug cartels is, is really what fucked it up. The <clears throat> The drug, cause yeah, bro, you you know, back then my they say that it was easy to cross over, but like weed and shit, people would just pull up to the little town and be like, "Who wants to cross some shit?" And then they just go to the river, you know, like it was Man. that easy. But eventually, with time, they started. the cartel started getting crazy. So, um, basically, it wasn't fun for me, bro. To be honest, I, I that sound Puerto Rico sounds fucking dope. Like that's crazy yeah. that you moved. That that's like a sacrifice, cause you're. Like you said, your homie's having a good ass time over there. Mm-hmm. With us, it was more like poverty. Like mm-hmm. we lived in a little ass town. There wasn't. My dad knew there wasn't shit for us there. Like if I was still there, I'd probably be just getting drunk, hustling, and, and like trying to like 
maybe robbing or shit. Or maybe the cartels would have fucking got a hold of my ass or some shit. I don't know. Yeah. Who knows? Because I think over there, it's like you don't have a choice. Like if they just grab your ass. Your ass yeah, yeah, that's yeah. Plata o plomo type shit, you know? It's real violent and shit. Like Juarez, I think it was, it's one of the most violent fucking places. So I, we didn't live in the city. We lived in like, um, it's called El Valle de Juarez. So it's like the farm. So I remember mm-hmm. as a kid, like riding horses and fucking seeing chickens so, and. Humilde de Rancho, you can say. Yeah, yeah, yeah hell yeah. yeah. Um, um, when I got here, I didn't like it, bro, because it was like, I got fat because in Mexico, I wasn't fat. I remember I used to play baseball. Fucking. Just because you were active out in like the streets and shit. And I think our little area, our little town, I guess, was. Uh, it was small when, when we lived there, so we could be outside and be running around and go to the neighbors and poop, 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 you know. Here is like, we lived by a Section 8 apartment, fucking. Mm. So it was like, nah, you ain't going outside, niggas. <laughs> Man, um, it's it's crazy, bro. And, and it kind of... Like you said, a culture shock. Yeah, I was it like, is. what it, the fuck? Coming down here, you know, you get used to like working, 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 because over there, you it's it's cool. You can keep a balance. And like, I don't know why, but work didn't really feel that bad. Um, I remember working at a restaurant and it was a tourist restaurant. I was a waiter, you know what I'm saying? I had fun with my homies. I, I was able to meet cool people and shit. Like you and would actually look forward to going to work. Yeah. Because of the people, the people that would come in, my coworkers. So it was fun. And then after work, it's like always something to do. So it's really like, if you don't have an ambition and you're just cool with doing that, then you can be happy. Like really like, Get but stuck, then at, yeah. at, at, at a certain point, you want to be like, man, I want to fucking, you know, own shit. I want to do this, but like freely without having nobody telling me shit. You know, that's where I'm at right now. And, you know, eventually that's the goal. But, man, I, I you know, it's crazy because as I'm looking at the fight yesterday, I'm looking at the performance and there's so many great talents over there in Mexico, bro. The talent, the places, bro, like it's it's such a big and beautiful country. And it's like. Would, do you ever think there's going to the, be the, the day? Uh, well, go ahead. The corruption, I think, is the, what fucks it up, it bro. It is, yeah, bro, because it's, it's like there's so many cartels. You got Cartel de Juarez and, you know, you got the other these other cartels and you like. So that, for anybody that, that wants to learn about that, those topics, because I think that's uh, misinterpreted a lot, like the narco culture and all that mm-hmm. shit, like people here make it cool. And that's one thing that I've always hated about like corridos and um, I'm not gonna lie. I, I'll vibe to them and 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 bullshit and stuff, but it, kinda, it bring it brings nothing but negativity to the to the culture. To be honest, like talking about you know doing drugs, mm-hmm. selling drugs, like that shit is not, and it has become a trend. Like on the podcast with Jay Poe, I was like, that's why I kept asking him. Like, don't you don't you think that's it's like trap? You know, like it's yeah bad. This is not a good thing. So. It, if you want to know the truth about it, there's a book called El Traidor uh, by the author Anabel. And Anabel is her first name, but it's called The Traitor. And in that book, you basically get what it really is. She's a journalist, so she tells you, like, the government. Is, she tells you everything. I'm not going to sit here and say it and, and ruin it for you, but that book tells you the truth of, like, how the cartels operate and why Mexico is where, where Mexico's at. And... That's what it is. It's just now. Do you think? I don't know if you keep up with politics over there, but do you think there's ever like that you look at a leader that's been there? You're like, damn, he, he might be the one. Have you ever looked at? Uh, well, I, I I don't keep up with that shit, but yeah. I don't think that. From my knowledge and understanding, the cartels run everything. Yeah, even it's, the government. So I feel like no it, matter how good of a leader you are, like. I feel like if I were to be like to sit at the table and I'm, you know, the government of Mexico, I'm looking at this shit. I'm like, you know, they put me the paperwork in. I'm like, how am I going to combat these motherfuckers? Because these motherfuckers really shoot back at the army. Like they can shoot back at the cops. They run the towns. They run. They run it. So at that point, it's like, do you ever think it will get to that point where it's just. I think the United States had talked about sending troops and like. I don't know, helping them out or something. I don't know. I, don't, I, I really don't like know. I, I I honestly, if we really want to get into conspiracy theory shit, I just feel like they don't, the government doesn't want things to change neither here nor there. Like, it's set up a certain way so money can keep flowing and motherfuckers can keep going to jail, motherfuckers can keep dying and so and so. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. I think that's what the system is. The The... The rat race, the 
Yeah, that's what what money. it is, you know. And so, like a lot of times, we're like, oh, where, where's the, the change going to be? And I mean, you might have a couple people that want to make a change, but yeah, look the where business is look, bigger than look. Look, look where they're look. Malcolm X got murked. Martin Luther King got murked. Yeah, Alex right. Jones got kicked off the fucking. Uh, everybody mm-hmm. that's actually speaking out and. That's why I don't. I think that I'll never be able to be like on a big platform or some shit like that. Cause yeah, I'll yeah. probably end up getting killed or fucking. It's oh man. It's because I'm gonna say how it is. You know what I'm yeah. saying? And I, I'm willing to die behind that. Cause it's like I see. I see. Yeah, I see the bullshit, bro. And I, I think what it comes down to too. It's like what they say. Like America isn't a country. It's a business. Cause a lot of shit doesn't make sense, but. In a way, it does because it's all about business. It's all about how yeah. much money is moving. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? So you just got to play the. Once you understand that it's a fucking uh, monopoly and like, a, and you just got to figure out how you want to play. It. Yeah, mm-hmm. how you want to like get in. But man, do you ever think you're gonna go back home and visit at least, or you know? Well, right now I'm on that Dream Act, so as of right now, I can't travel outside of the United States. Uh, I can just travel the states. So um, I plan on just. Hitting a, a tour here in the United States first. We got it, yeah, definitely. We got to map that out, bro. I feel like we, we're we due. We're due for a trip, bro. I feel like, you know, we've been constantly on the grind, hustling and shit. So, whether it's your you, New York, because I do want to go to New York, we can fucking map that out, bro. That'd be a make crazy that shit, video. Make that shit happen, and then um, just keep going from there, man. Make some dope dope content, you know what I'm saying? So, I don't, and as far as that goes, I don't know, bro. I came here when I was seven, so I don't know if I... It, I don't know. I don't know if I'll go back to my town and try to fix that shit. Like, it's one of those where it's a little challenging. I don't challenging. know if I can fix it. Yeah, I don't know. <laughs> even if you become a big name and like you have money and shit, man, I think that's a tough one, bro. Yeah, you can't battle with them niggas. Yeah, they you gotta you gotta be a person of power. You know, I think you have to be a person of power, and even that, you're going against big guns. Yeah, you know? big guns. So I don't know, but yeah, man, it's. Uh, what did you think of the fight yesterday? Bro, the fight was good. It was good. I think it finished that on the eighth round. Uh, Canelo got him with a good hook, but he Kno- was making it. Knocked him out? No, well, he got him with a good hook in the eye, bro. So his eye was already morado, and, like, he could barely open it. So when he went, that round finished, he went to his corner. His corner was looking at him, like, and he's, he's struggling. You can see he's, like, trying to, like, yeah. and for safety concerns, they called the fight. His corner called the fight, which is good. You know what I'm saying? You don't want to, you know, if you know that can, you know, kind of yeah. can keep hitting there, and that motherfucker hits hard. You know what I'm saying? So... I think it's good, bro. It was good. The first couple of rounds, it was very close. You know, a couple of rounds, uh, the other guy, fuck, I forgot his name, but he was giving him a, t- a hard time trying to... So right now, Canelo's La Verga Mas Bro, he is a solid motherfucker. He, he looks sharp, bro. Like, he was, you know... Nobody's fucking with the kid right now? I, I don't think so. And, I'm, and I tell you this, man, um, when... Uh, if he would have fought Mayweather like three years ago, let's just Stop. say three. Stop. Game over, it. bro. Game over for Mayweather. I'm telling you that, Stop bro. Stop it. And I'm a Mayweather fan, you know what I'm saying? I, I used to be a Mayweather hater. But Stop then I it with that coulda, shoulda, woulda bullshit. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. You know what I'm saying? Um, but it's pretty good, man. And I think we should take, you know, get somebody's take on it. What you think? Well, you want to go live? That way people can see. Or what do you want to do, man? Let's do it. Let's do it. Let's, let's go live and then uh, hit up CAC. Let's or for, for the fight, who who could we call that? Um, well, we'll see if we have any experts here. But um, if you're listening to this uh, and you want to join our next live, make sure to follow us on Instagram at Half Court. Oh, I think it's at the Half Court Podcast. Because um, we're going to start doing this regularly, you know. We're doing what, two, two calls today? We're doing two calls, yes. We're doing one live and then boom. We're going to go live right now. Boom, Instagram.com. You know what I'm saying? Okay, so I think with CAC, we can talk a little bit about... Um, I wonder if he did watch the fight. Well, but yeah, ladies and gentlemen, we are live on Instagram. Remember, at thehalfcourtpodcast.com. Let's see. Let's give it some time to uh, for people to tune in. But I think it was a good fight, man. I think it was definitely... Uh, it was sold out. That was that was it was. It was uh, in Dallas, Texas, right? Dallas, the the uh, Cowboy Stadium. So that was big, right there. Damn. Yo, 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 Aliciano, was good, brother. We're live. We're doing a podcast right now. You know what I'm saying? What's up, pimpin'? You know what I'm saying. So we're trying to get some pros here, some pro boxers to you know give a intake on. Or I mean, you don't even got to be a pro boxer if you well, yeah, yeah. You just, if you, you know, if you know about you just the fight. know about boxing and you want to yeah, so. chime in. So right now we are going to uh, 
you know, get somebody, we're going to call somebody mid podcast. You know what I'm saying? We're trying to switch things up, revamp, you know what I'm saying? So, um, if you want to be a part of this call, you know, be a part of the podcast, a little five, 10 minutes and give your take on last night's fight. If you watch the Canelo fight, just tap in, man, tap in. We'll give you a call. You know what I'm saying? Let's wait for more people to come in, but it's crazy to think, man, that there was a lot of, uh, people. It was like 73,000. Yeah, so out. Dallas made a lot of money last night. Dallas made a lot of money. Fucking Canelo made a lot of money. So COVID uh, is over or what? <laughs> I don't know, bro. COVID is a weird thing, bro. It, it, it sometimes seems like a myth. You know what I'm saying? Because it's weird. You know, you got the stadium that sold out. Everybody sitting next to each other. And then you got also, you know. Motherfuckers you go, with masks. Yeah, exactly. So yeah. it's like, I don't know, bro. I don't know. I'm just, I'm, I'm I don't know, bro. I'm, I have gotten to the point where. I'm, I go into places without a mask. If you ask me to put on a mask, I'll put on a mask. Because everybody, yeah. like, I look at my, like, and nobody's wearing a mask. You know what I'm saying? And that yeah. shit doesn't work. You've been raw dogging it. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So, yeah, man. Let's uh, definitely wait for more people to come in. And by the way, happy Mother's Day to all the mothers out there. You know what I'm saying? We are live right now. So, tune in. We're going to call somebody right now. Let me check these cameras. Yeah, yeah. Go ahead. You know what I'm saying? We're switching things up. Shots by KC. What's good, brother? What's good? We're live right now. Whoever watched the Canelo fight last night, tap in. Tap in. Mm. <clears throat> yeah, man, I wonder if they're going to do a rematch because that fight was good. I feel like if he didn't get hit that hard, that fight would have went to distance. And um, who knows? Who knows? I was a little nervous. You know what I'm saying? I was rooting for Canelo all the way, but it was a good fight. It was a close fight. So. Uh, we're trying to call somebody. Let's pull up the stats. Let's pull up the motherfucking yeah, tickets, let, the let's, receipts. Let's pull up some stats here. You know what I'm saying? Um, Viva Jalisco. Hell yeah. Hell yeah. Hell yeah. So, you know what I'm saying? Tap in. Share this live right now. We out you. Yeah, bro. I, I can't wait for my wrist to get better just because I want to get back on, the, you know, get back in the gym. And I want to definitely hit up Saicedo because I want to train with him. You know, he got the little... Shout out to Alex, man. He uh, is training now. So, y'all go follow him. Uh, what's his in Instagram? Alex Salcedo, K-O. Yeah. yeah I think and so. you guys can actually train with him, which is fucking crazy. Mira, este... Uh, Eric. Yo, I'm gonna hit your line up, bro. You, you, you was live at the fight. Let me get your intake on that, bro. Yeah. Let me hit you up, bro. I'm finna call you, my nigga. Give me a second. Let's call. Let's call Eric here. He he was he was live. Okay, we let's call I, Eric. I see you, Darwin, over here, Mister Two Phone Darwin. <laughs> <laughs> I got two. You know what I'm saying? I got Yo, Eric, two. I'm gonna hit you up, bro. Oh. Let's see. He okay, okay. That, that boy was live. He, he he's he's one of he's he's like me. We we keep up with the fights and shit. Let me hit him up. Let's see what's good. Yo, I'm calling you right now, bro. Hello. Dímelo, baby, me escucha. Dímelo, bro. All right, all right, bro. All right. Uh, what up, what up, pimpin'? You, you, you in the podcast, bro. We live. Hey, hey what's good? What's going on, Aaron? Yeah, bro. So we want to get your intake because you was live and direct. So how was the experience, first of all? What was that again? So uh, we want to get your intake, you know what I'm saying? So you went to the fight. You experienced it live. How was the experience? Yeah, it was crazy, bro. I haven't, I've never been around so many people. Bro, that shit was packed, huh? What was that again? That shit was packed, huh? Oh yeah. Hell yeah. So what? What? What's your take on the fight, bro? What? What, what can you give us as far as like Canelo and like what he did and shit? Canelo dominó toda la pelea. He dominated. Bro, I, bro, that guy was fighting, fighting him back, but he dominated. I thought it was a close one, right? Uh, to me, like, you know, the before that big punch, I think it was pretty close because it was get, it was hard for Canelo. He was hitting him with a couple of body shots, but um, yeah, I would say probably like the yeah, six. But Canelo, Canelo, if you see the, the punches uh, Billy was landing, it yeah. wasn't doing nothing to Canelo. <laughs> it's true, that's true. Going forward, yeah, like, uh, and if you see the punches uh, Canelo would land, bro, he, he was he was destroying them. So yeah, because uh, so, so Canelo landed thirty nine body shots. Yeah, he was hitting them hard, bro. So that boy's ribs are yeah. fucked. Yeah, <laughs> it don't matter if you have your arm right there. He was gonna hit your arm too, bro. Yeah. So that, how, uh, was most people? Most people there were rooting for Canelo, right? Bro, it was deep. 
Yeah, yeah, most definitely. There's like a couple of people that were on the, uh, you know, like in front of us. There were some people from where that guy's from. British, uh, England. The shit out of them. Oh my god, bro! It was it, it was it, all good. It was good vibes. It was they wasn't fights or anything. Oh, that's good. That's good. Hell yeah, man. I think it was yeah. it was deep, bro. Like, I, I seen, like, every time Canelo would throw a punch, everybody would be like, oh, and, like, the crowd was going oh, crazy. Yeah. And then every time, like, uh, the uh-huh. Billy would come out, they'd be like, boo. And you could hear it, bro. Like, there's it was deep, bro. The culture yeah. was deep in there. You know what I'm saying? Oh, so yeah. Yeah. Every time, every time they would show up on the screen, everybody would be booing. All crazy. right. It was uh, crazy, bro. It was cool. I got to ask you this, Eric. So just like um, we both are like boxing is definitely a culture over there in Puerto Rico and shit. You know, we keep up with we've been keeping up with Canelo since the get go. Um, Do you think Canelo is the greatest Mexican boxer of all time? No. Not of all time. Julio Cesar Chavez. Yeah. Okay. Julio Cesar Chavez. Okay. That's that's definitely okay. Okay. So, because he's he's one of the greatest pound for pound. Like Canelo's been on his shit, you know what I'm saying? So, it's 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 definitely he's there. He's still he's what 31 type shit. I'm not sure. I don't 31 keep up with boxing. Nah, I'm not. I'm not sure about that. So he's he's still yeah, in his prime. He still, has some time and he, still he still looks strong. All right. So if you had to put somebody, I'll ask you this before we wrap this up. Um, if you had to ask somebody, like if you had to put a, an opponent opponent as good to fight Canelo, who would it be? Is there somebody out there right now? <laughs> Nobody. So what, what? Oh me, huh? <laughs> with with Tyson, with Tyson and shit. Yeah. Um. <laughs> uh, one more question, bro. So if you put Canelo like two, three years ago against Mayweather, who wins? Ah, uh, yo digo que este Canelo se lo lleva. Oh, I said the same shit, bro. I said the same. Bro, it's crazy how he's changed. Yeah, he's changed like crazy, bro. His yeah. fighting style is just fucking impeccable. Oh, yeah. I think, I think that oh, yeah, too. Bro. Hell yeah, bro. So. Mm-hmm. And his defense too. Hell yeah, bro. That shit. He's on that Mayweather level type shit as far as defense, bro. That motherfucker good. He just took it yeah, to the next yeah. level. But shit, bro, I appreciate your take on that, man. This shit was cool. We was just trying this shit out, you know what I'm saying? Hey, man, so. I hey, bro, how, how faded did you get? Did you sip or what? <laughs> Oh boy, I was super faded. <laughs> <laughs> oh shit, that's what yeah, uh, fucking. We drank, we drank so much, Are you on your way back? I promise you, baby. Are you on your way back? Yeah, I'm on my way back, man. Hell yeah, bro. Well, shit, I'll tap in with you, bro. Drive safe. Hey, I appreciate y'all. All right, Have bro. A good one. Peace. And happy Mother's Day. It's today's Mother's Day. All right, bro. Same to you, bro. Happy Mother's Day. Why are we? I'm not a know. mother. <laughs> I'm just going with it, bro. It's just okay. the vibes. You know what I'm saying? So, um, there goes that, man. Uh, you guys are going to catch this episode this Thursday, but uh, let's call. Who, who we calling next? Uh, shout out to Eric, too, man. That's the first call, and he's been supporting the movement. For real, bro. Jump, For real. So. You know what I'm saying? So, so uh, little Darwin fight. in the cut. Hell yeah, bro. We out here. You know what I'm saying? Um, re- revamp, man. We're just trying shit out, trying to get more engaging with the people, but. Um, right now we're gonna call who are we calling? We're gonna call Cac. Oh boy, this should be a good one. Okay, so if you call wanna... him first. Call him first because okay. he won't pick up my number. I'm pretty sure he won't. Um, let's see. Tell him I'm gonna call him. So yeah, we are live and indirect, taking phone calls, trying something new, um, talking about the Canelo fight. Hello. What up, what up, pimping? You just woke up or what? No. You sound like it. <laughs> For real. <laughs> sound like he busted and shit. Hey, did you watch the fight last night? Uh huh. Huh? Who? Canelo and Saunders. It was a boxing fight. I'm cool watching a long time ago with the Mexicans. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh, man. Well, discard him and shit. Hey, uh, we're going to call you. Darwin's going to call you from his phone. We're going to get a take uh, for the podcast. So just answer this phone call right quick. Uh, All right. What, what are we going to ask him? We're just going to talk boxing. All right, bet. <clears throat> Let's see. Appreciate that, Izzy. Appreciate it. 
All right, ladies and gentlemen, you already know where to find us. Half Court Podcast everywhere. We're going to go ahead and end this. Uh, just trying shit out. So stay tuned for the next one. Peace. Oh, what a fag. He didn't answer. He's like, fuck that. Your call has been forwarded. Ah, God. He got nervous. Yep, too much pressure. But um, yeah, bro. I mean, I think uh, definitely when it goes to the fight, I think it's a cool thing because just the the vibes and the memories you create. I mean, back in the day, I mean, that shit was... Uh, it was a religion, you know what I'm saying? Going to the homies' houses and like... Well, I think it, it still is, man. It is. It still you know? is. Um, I didn't catch it yesterday. I was just on some other vibes, but that's it's always fun to gather the carne and yeah, everybody. And, and Even I, if you don't really know a lot about boxing, it's always good to just... Yeah. That's a good thing. And that's like you mentioned like before, like sports bring people together, you know, and that shit was... You know, yesterday was like due to the whole pandemic, it was like now that shit is getting back to normal. You're like, damn, I, used, I missed this shit, you know what I'm saying? So... Hopefully we can get more of that boxing shit. Now the FIFA is about to be around the corner. I think it's next year. Um, and that's going to be amazing because that people get so hyped up. So, you know, sportsmanship and all that shit. So it's cool, man. Um, the only thing I, I don't like about boxing is the fact that they're in there fucking beating the fuck out of each other for our entertainment. But I guess everybody chooses their own po- uh, poison. Yeah, it's one of those where it's like it, it's definitely a sport. A tough sport for sure And it's all about decisions and, and strategy Because one move Like I know who, it looks sharp Who's but, making the most money Out of all this? Uh, as uh, Who's making the most money Out of all this? Boxing? wise. Like yesterday's fight Who who got I, the biggest I, check? I think Canelo bro Canelo because got that, the biggest that, check? Uh, Billy That was Billy's biggest fight Even though he was undefeated He was like 30 and 0 So out of all the All the promotion companies And out of all the The, the big executives And Canelo made the most money out of that fight. Yeah. Yeah. I would say him and then the owner of the fucking Cowboys. Cause they're, they're oh, was it, who made more, the owner of the Cowboys or Canelo? I don't know, bro. I'm broke. I can't talk numbers. You know well, what I'm, what I'm saying is that. But I would assume. I would assume. Is that, that the corporate white, white man is the one that's winning off of. Probably, bro. Off of a bunch of motherfuckers with Mexican yeah. flags. And, uh, you can't. You can't. You know lose. what I'm saying? So it's. It, it, we're just. Uh, retarded as a fucking culture Like <laughs> but bro, It's crazy bro that, That's why I don't really Associate Like I'd like to associate with Cause At the end It's like um, But bro the thing is the way Like culture have, vulture shit You have to look at it as like Fuck it bro If they already They're the big names And you're obviously a big name Because if you look at Canelo's story bro He used to be bullied Because his hair was red So he would get bullied And one day I think it was when he was 10 or something They kept bullying him He just fucking Threw the punch and fucking hit the guy and hit the kid, the bully. He was bigger than him, too. The bully was bigger than him. So he hit him in the nose. His nose started bleeding. He was like, shit, I like this shit. And that sparked his, you know, interest for boxing and shit. And now he's a multimillionaire, bro. So for somebody that, that, that up, That's cool, but I, I think more people need to be praised for other things, too. Like, sports are cool, but what are the chances that a young kid is going to be like Canelo, you know? That's... Or like that a young kid's gonna be a corrido singer and shit like that. Like I don't like when the culture does things like that. Like they they idolize a certain it's like, bro, why don't you fucking idolize a yeah, somebody that's uh doing business or something, you know, mm-hmm. more because boxing is not I mean, look, we we fucking had Alex I asked him, Do you think that boxing causes brain damage? She was like, No, I think it'll make me sharper next Two fights, he's out. So, yeah. I don't. I I personally don't agree with 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 it. Like having two motherfuckers up there just beating the fuck out of each other, and the one that made the most money is a dude that was sitting in the box thing. Yeah, yeah, for just sure. Watching. I, I get you. I get you. I get you. On I, that, I think yeah. that's a sucker shit. Like, it is uh, definitely one of those. But there's people that like that sport, bro. Like, yeah, no, really. and I, I, I definitely, I obviously like, think about they fucking, sold out the whole fucking yeah. arena. But me personally, I didn't even watch the fucking fight because I don't. Yeah, think I just don't it. fuck with it, you know. But it's a hot topic, so. Yeah, no, no, for <laughs> sure. I mean, think about like UFC, bro. For example, mm-hmm. like boxing, at least, yeah, you you gonna get a busted lip and this and that. But UFC, they get broken nose, yeah, they yeah, break their yeah. legs and shit, and they still. And Dana I, White is the one cashing out on all those. Dana fucking White idiots. is the one, you know, but. He created the platform, bro. Like, he really was the pioneer of that yep. shit. So it's like, yeah, the motherfucker's cashing out and shit. But, I mean, shit. You know, somebody that wants to become Dana a White's still a uh, uh, daddy. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? So um, it's a lot, bro. But like anything, bro, it's like 
if you really like if fighting is all you know and you want to make a living out of it and you know get out of poverty and like you know then fuck it go for it you know what i'm saying but i definitely get where you're coming from you know it's the people that's always in the back just fucking sipping on their little wine and watching the fight yep. they're the one get that hefty bag and this is how it is bro you know same with the NBA, same with the NFL, all these motherfuckers with yeah. the white collar. Is it the white collar or the blue collar that you call? I don't know, but, yeah. the, you know, like, it's so. the ones in the box office fucking. But that, that, that's just how it works. That's just how I it works. Know, bro. I, all I know, bro, is um, I'm, I'm trying to get this back, too. You know, uh, recently I heard uh, Melinda Gates and Bill Gates, they, they're they breaking up. So, yeah, you know, yeah, I created yeah. a little tender. You know what I'm saying? I'm trying to holler at Melinda. You know mm. what I'm saying? So I heard I heard she got, they all, all the kids got a uh, 10... Million. All their kids? Like each one of the kids only got 10 million. That's only? Aren't they fucking, isn't Bill Gates like, doesn't he own half of the world and shit? He's he's a (laughs) multi-billionaire, Isn't he the one that rolled out the little vaccine things? I don't know, bro. You mean to tell me I'm Bill Gates' son and I only get 10 million? Bro. Fuck is going on, dad. I'll take it. I'll take it. I don't don't care. I'll take it. The fuck is this, dad? (laughs) Dad, I hate you. So pay rent for fucking... Two years, but Jesus Christ! I'm trying to holler at Melinda, man. I think uh, Melinda is that she's beautiful. Wife? She's beautiful. Yeah, oh, she's beautiful. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I'm saying? <laughs> so, uh, uh, w- would you do that? Would you? Uh, how you doing? Beautiful. Would you get with a girl um, that takes care of you? So, let's say she she makes more money than you. She and Bruh, she, she can and pay, she, and she's like. Uh, she, so yeah. let's say I'm in a relationship. Like she takes care of you, basically. All oh. you got to do is lay down the pipe. <laughs> <laughs> if I'm in a relationship and I find me a sugar mama, I'm, I'm, t- I'm talking to my lady. I'm like, hey, she going to pay my bills. Anyways. No, 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 no. I'm saying, I'm saying like if it's an actual like a relationship, like it's a girl that just wants to like she. Are we talking sugar mama or just. No, ra- no, no, okay, no. I'm okay. not talking sugar mama. Oh, I'm talking oh. like a girl that's just on her shit. And she's like, uh, would you be comfortable with that? Letting her just come yeah. on, come on. Let's let's she go to let's, let's go to the mall, Darwin. I'll let you. I'll show you and shit. Use <laughs> yeah. my Amex and shit. You, yeah, the platinum. You can, you can get whatever shoes. Oh, why not? Yeah, well, yeah, bro. I'll be like, shit. Come on, let's go. You know what I'm saying? Because that gives me time to focus on this shit. So I'll be yeah. like, show on. Let's yeah. go. You know what I'm saying? Like two episodes a week in oh, this motherfucker, bro. What? I mean, shit. I'm starting the OnlyFans and everything, bro. Come on, stop playing. Yeah, that's cool. I think that's one thing about uh, relationships is changing a little more now. Like girls are more. Uh, yeah, I mean independent and shit. So I mean, because bro, not? I know a lot of girls are way more successful than me. So they got that's, a bag. They got that's, a bag. that's what might end up happening. <laughs> They got a little bag And yeah. all I gotta do is pipe yeah, Boy they, let's go They got you know? good credit and shit mm, Yeah mm. And I'm just an unstable motherfucker <laughs> So I might meet and need me a little Stable one with a job and good credit you A heard? little thank thing One of them little thank things But Yeah bro I mean it's a Shit that to me would be a one in a lifetime Fucking opportunity Shit I'll take that shit You know what I'm saying There's a So there's this uh, There was this story That showed up on like on my social media that was pretty interesting. There's this uh there's this couple that was in an eight year relationship, right? And Drake somehow found her. She was a singer. She wanted to be a singer. So Drake somehow found her and flew her out to do a couple okay, of Okay, so like, this singers. girl's a singer. She's a singer. Drake runs across one of her yeah. songs. And it's like, hey, I'm gonna fly you out. Mm. She ends up going over there and the couple of eight years end up breaking up. He posted something saying, blaming Drake. Like, hey, like my relationship, eight year relationship. What a pussy! Uh, it, it fell apart thanks to Drake. What a pussy! And looks like Drake ended up smashing. Well, and yeah. Then, see, that's why I'm a red pill. But here's the question that I ask you, Av. So, if an opportunity comes to spend one night with Drake, let's say you know, let's say Rihanna. Let's say Rihanna, not Drake. You know, what I'm saying? <laughs> this let's, nigga. I was about to say, come on, pause, <laughs> big pause. <laughs> Fuck as you, <laughs> fuck as you are, buddy. <laughs> Let's say Rihanna, right? You're in a relationship, a your relationship. You know, Rihanna's like, damn, baby, I like how you rap. Uh. Let me fly you out. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> and then you know, she ends up like, damn, I like your music, but I like you. You know what I'm saying? So I'm trying to, I'm trying to have you pipe me and shit. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> but you're over here like, damn, what the fuck should I do? What would you do? Okay, so she tells me that she wants to get piped off the off the off the yeah. off top, like she she or she, she's like, come over here and we can make a song. We'll make a song, 
But, and, but then when I'm there making you're in the, the studio, song, you're, you guys are vibing. You know, Jesus what I'm like, Christ! I honestly like AV. He fucking like like. Well, he, it would depend if I. And you're saying I'm in a. I was in an eight year relationship. You're, on, you're in an eight oh year relationship. Oh my god! And you're you're. And honey, it's Rihanna. Your hubbly bubbly was like, I support you. Go and do your Rihanna? thing. You know what I'm saying? And it's Rihanna. Ooh, that's a that's a tough one, right? I, I'm probably fucking up. I'm probably <laughs> fucking up. <laughs> See, it's one of those where it's like the guy blames Drake, but in reality, I think. It was a the female's fault, just because you yeah. you made that decision. You can't blame the game. You can't hate on the, on the, the player. Play, you can't hate on the player. Hate the game. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> so I feel like it's one of those where it's like, yeah, it's a that's one. why I'm a red pill, bro. Because I really do feel that most people are. Um, now let's say, I, I, I hold up. I think most people for the, they're gonna go for the. It would just depend, to be honest, though. If if that seven year relationship was going to shit already. Then uh, I'm going balls deep up in that <laughs> thing. But if uh, let's say I, it was a really solid relationship and it was actually like a good connection, yeah, then I'd probably nah. Yeah, like, if it's Riri, if she's hitting you with the work, 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 and twerking on you and uh, shit, maybe like, I'll tell my girl like, "Are you down? <laughs> Are you down? I mean, come on, this is a one in a lifetime opportunity. You can come. You can come too, girl. <laughs> oh, we shit. can make a movie." Um, so if it's the other but way, but if around, it's a real relationship that's already going down the drain, and I, I mean, the, at that point. she's already pissed me off, yeah, yeah. best believe I'm going balls so deep. So if, if it's it, if you're in the guy's position, yeah. and you got your girl, she's talented, she can sing, and Drake is like, let me, let me, you know, let me. I can't record. get mad. I can't get mad at that shit, bro. It's Drake, huh? I can't, well, it's not just that it's Drake. It's with anything. If a dude is gonna take your girl, then you can't be mad at him. Be mad at yourself for fucking. Not, being, not for choosing the wrong for your judgment being that fucking yeah you know the, yeah it's a, it's and a, then at the at the end of the day I I truly b- believe that most people are gonna go where the, the good opportunity is for the most part you might have those people that are loyal and will take a L with you but from my experience most times like most people won't when she gets bad they're gonna go. With somebody that's gonna mm-hmm. give them a, a more, why would they deal with your bullshit when then yeah. they can go with somebody that is gonna put them in a better position, you know? Yeah. So, yeah, cool. I um, understand that, so I think mm-hmm. that's why I wouldn't be too mad about it. Mm-hmm. But I can understand if that dude was like a simp ass dude that was yeah. in love with the girl, and like yeah. you might have to watch him because that nigga might go on suicide watch or something. Uh, so it's a thing, bro. It's one of the hardest things, you know. I'm pretty sure he's going through it right now. And breakups are a bitch. Cause yeah, I, I yeah. like I was in a long ass breakup like that. I was seven years. Yeah. Thank God she didn't leave me for Drake. <laughs> but it, it was tough getting over it because mm-hmm. you're like, damn, what the fuck is yeah, going it's, on? It's one of those. Love is is addicting, bro. It's really one of those where it's like, when you break up, you're used to that person. It doesn't matter if it was toxic or not. Regardless of which side it was, it's still you still like hey, no, it's different. It's still, yeah, you're like fuck. Like you know, I'm not, I'm not texting this person anymore. I'm not calling them. I'm not. You know what I'm saying? Like he's they're not in my life anymore. So it's like it when is that? Yeah, when it's something. When it's a long relationship like that, it is. Uh, so that's crazy. That, that that shows you. That shows you right there. That for the most part, even if it's a seven year relationship, any girl, if Drake calls them. Your eight year relationship, your twenty year, <laughs> like if uh yeah, I think uh Drake and Bad Bunny are them niggas, bro. That can take any any girls and and, any and, and not just that. I feel like just because. any any dude that has some sort of status, man. Like you can just you can see it. Like when I I've shot concerts and shit like that, and it's I'm like, what the fuck? They want the clout type Pe- shit. Like people are they follow the clout. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, girls are like um. Mesmerized by, fam- find by, goofy, by famous motherfuckers. That's why I find it goofy when niggas is chasing like you know females and shit because it's like, bro, chase a bag first and then you'll get chased at. You know what I'm saying? But it's so weird though because that's what, that's what it is. That's what it is. You know? Yeah, yeah, you're right. Because even when I was in high school, I was like, I was chasing the bag first, and then I got. Uh, you get. Like, damn, this motherfucker's hustling. This motherfucker's getting it. He's making a name for himself. Like, shit, let me, let me, let me slide. But if you're wasting your time chasing, you know, chasing hoes and shit, like. But I, th- I guess I was still chasing, though, because even though I was making money and, and shit like that, I still had a girl. So I was like, still, I was still trying to get her, you know, or trying to get the prettiest girl in school. Mm-hmm. Or, yeah. Like, it was like, even though I was chasing, 
Of course, I knew I needed money. But your whole focus wasn't on chasing a girl. You had that like, all right, I'm going to get the bag and then... Or how, how how did your situation go? Uh, in high school, I think it was like... Because okay. high school is different. I feel like it's, you know... In high school, it was like I, I knew I needed to work to provide for myself, like my gas, my insurance. Mm-hmm. If I want... Because a lot of people didn't have that in high school. They were still getting dropped off and shit, you know? So I knew I had to fucking have a car, gas, insurance. And then if I wanted to have a girl, then I wasn't going to have to go ask my yeah. dad for money yeah, to go yeah, take yeah. a like, girl out on a uh-huh, date. So... Uh-huh. I, I just started working at Brahms and yeah, I was making money, bro. I was I I I, I was fresh and shit. I was yeah. probably fresher then than I was I am now, you know. Yeah, yeah, hell yeah, man. That's uh. But at the end of the day, it was it was to chase uh, it was to fucking pull some chicks. Like I I wasn't doing that shit just for myself. I don't think. Right, but I think I was at, like sixteen. At a certain point, you I know, wanted to impress. I think, especially at that age when you're getting out of high school, I feel like that's what you really like. I would go for the gym. Like now, I go for, to the gym to feel good about myself and better myself. But back then, I was going like, "Damn, I want to." I did like going working out and shit, but I was like, "Man, you knew the reaction girls yeah, got." Yeah, like if I get a, like if I enhance my six pack and I fucking start building muscle, then shit, females are gonna be all over me and shit. You know what I'm saying? It's crazy how we do things for that kind of like. Yeah, like Tack. That's what he says. He's like, yeah. I don't, uh, I I don't. Work out to be healthy or I work out to get some pussy. <laughs> it's one of those, bro. It's a powerful thing, bro. I feel like it's a powerful thing and it moves. I think it's, uh, I read it somewhere that uh, the like sexual energy is the um, it is strongest it is. energy we have. So almost everything men do is to at some point pull that girl. That's like. It's weird because we really don't understand the, the like the actual complex of that energy because really if you're, you know, you're going to smash a player, right? You're going to feed off of that energy. That energy is going to transmit to you. You know what I'm saying? You're going to like, so if you really are wanting to be clean and positive and shit, then you got to find, you got to do better. You know what I'm saying? And vice versa, you know? So yeah, you can't just be sticking it anywhere, man. Cause it's, uh, so I, I, I just feel too, that that becomes, um, the whole more like you said chasing pussy becomes the motivation for living so like somebody is is at work and doing what they're got to do but they're ready to go to the club afterwards or go to right. the chase like, you know what i'm saying it's the fucking uh marco's hilarious with the memes he was like niggas spend uh 70 hours a week working to look forward to the club to be in a corner just looking and like yeah or know, or, 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 or you got those that are looking and then you got the ones that are actually spending the yeah, fucking money spending, like yeah. they got all the girls around them but they're running it up racks uh fuck that you know what i'm saying yeah and, don't don't yeah and that, we, that uh, becomes an addiction too like like oh i smashed her i smashed her now i smashed her. and then the, it, list, it, the body counts and like it's more of a that's yeah that's i why. think that's i think that's another big part of, of why people are depressed and shit like that and the, the the sad part is in reality is too bro it's like you know you look at you know videos and all this crazy stuff and people talking about having side pieces and stuff where it like it's really messing up Having a long term relationship yep. because you know it's all about side pieces and you know the trust ch- is, is, is cheating is trust much issues. Done. So it, it becomes a hard, you know, a hard way to build a healthy and long term relationship. So it's like it's one of those where it's because like, I feel like everybody's on defense mode. You know that mm-hmm. that's what ends up happening. Like uh, my mom says, it, "Como viven juzgan." Exactly. So if you're out there fucking just going crazy, then you're thinking that everybody else is like you, you know, so then you're always in the defense. Uh, yeah. Don't post your personal life on social media. Don't post much on your relationship either. Like nobody needs to know, you know, mm-hmm. what the fuck you guys got going on and just keep it low key. You know, honestly, saying? I think you can stay get away rid of your media. fucking social media. <laughs> yeah. yeah, stay away from it, you know. That's why uh, eventually, you know, if we were able to find somebody that can run our social media as far as the half court, I'm staying hell of away from it, bro, because I'm already away from it as it is. Mm -hmm. And the reason why I get on it is just to start promoting and shit and like, yeah, yeah, yeah. see what for work. Yeah. What 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 the whole thing is going on? You know what I'm saying? Because it's crazy, bro. The Internet is crazy. You know, it's good and bad. But yeah, relationship is definitely an interesting one. Um, Uh, Talk about the whole Bit, what was it that you were going to talk about? Oh, the so Bitcoin? the meme coin. So, bro, it's crazy. The meme coin, there's this coin that's called Dogecoin. It started as a meme coin. 
just for the fuck of it. Somebody created the coin and then fucking TikTok came along and we're like, let's bump this motherfucker to a dollar. So I started at like at one cent, less than a cent, bro. Mm-hmm. And uh, the TikTok meme started going off and then people started putting money. So at a certain point, it was at seven cents, bro. I had Robin Hood at the time and I uh, put, I bought like a hundred dollars. So I had a shit ton of Deutsche coin, right? So when the whole GameStop happened, you know, everybody's pumping the stock up. And then Robin Hood was like, you can't buy, you can't buy more, any more GameStop. That was some rig shit. So I fucking sold all my stocks and closed the app, right? And I forgot to buy Deutsche coin because I sold my Deutsche coin and never bought it again. So I went on another app. So fast forward, people thought it was going to stay there, but it ended up going up to like 40 cents, bro. So people that bought at seven cents, like my manager bought, put a hundred dollars towards it, bro. When he showed me the other day, bro, he had made like uh, a rack off of, yeah. off of just putting a hundred dollars. So now that it went all the way up to 60 cents, he showed me his shit again. And it was at eight racks, man. The so, homie, I, I, I need to um, get the homie Carter on a, on a phone call here soon, but yeah. he does the Bitcoin and yesterday he was at the shop just anxious because like looking at it looking at it but it's addicting bro like i was like bro um you haven't been going to the casino no more he's like nah i got crypto it's right here <laughs> <laughs> he's like fuck the casino bro he's like this is better he's like, yeah it, it, it. and it's crazy because i had a client come in and he was like let's go uh, let's go smoke so i i was smoking with him and he said i heard y'all talking about crypto on the podcast i was like look bro I don't know shit. <laughs> I'm just a moron. Yeah, I don't know shit, bro. Darwin, I, I was just sitting there listening and because I know it's good for the audience, but yeah. I don't know shit about it. So I bought this. I got this app. Oh, by the way, we we got Becky to. Uh, she's gonna stop by the Half Court Podcast. She just confirmed. Uh, okay, hell yeah! I'm so excited for gotta, that one. Um, I'm excited we, for that one. We gotta move things around, but that's gonna be a good one for everybody. Yes. Um, Very informative. So, yeah, we went on this life app that I was telling you guys about where you can kind of told us what it was about. But I went inside the barbershop and shout out to Carter. Um, I was like, Carter, what do you know about crypto? So he was like, oh, shit. Don't get me started. <laughs> yeah. So he so comes yeah, over can, there and he started, he started chopping it up. And he literally set my homie up like uh, he told him what to do and shit. Yeah. As he's getting a haircut. So that's I was like, damn, that's crazy. You know, so. Up. I guess it's not that complicated. <laughs> it's not, bro. I think it's just more of doing like the initial research to kind of get more familiar on what is crypto and what is its function because different kind of coins and cryptocurrencies have different uh, functions. Um, so can you lose your crypto? You can. You can. It's just like how though. Just pr- picture it as a stock market, right? So the way it works, bro. So people buy, and the more people buy, the value goes up, right? But as people start selling the value goes down. So if you put a certain amount of money, so let's say I bought at 40 cents and it goes up to 50 cents. Well, I'm going to make some profits off of that because it went up in value. Mm -hmm. But if it starts going down below the 40 point, then I start losing money because the value isn't. So do you have to know when to cash out? Is that the thing? Is that the key? You need to social media, especially with the meme coin. So for example, your homie right now, he made what my manager made uh, eight racks. Okay, eight, eight racks, racks so right now. Let's, a, let's say he sees an article and it says like that that is gonna start going down or something. Then he just cashes out and then. So you keeps- have two options here. The way he says is like, listen, I invested a hundred dollars and I was okay with losing that a hundred dollars. Now, if this is if I'm not gonna make an amount that's life changing, I'm not gonna sell. Like you know what I'm saying? Because at the end of the day, it's it was a hundred dollars that I put down. And yes, I'm not going to obviously blow all my profits. Like if it starts plunging down, then I can like, all right, if it goes down to 5K, then I'm going to cash out yeah. or 4K and cash out and take my profits. But at the but end of the day, you didn't have the 8K to begin with. He's so. like, yeah, it's not life changing. So I'm not going to cash out because it's, if it's not something that's big numbers, the, you know, five figures, See, that's six what, figures. That's why yesterday I kept saying we must protect Carter by any means necessary. <laughs> Because so, that's why he would, I think that what he was looking at was some life changing shit. That's it, why he we was, are. I mean, I think uh, that's one of the things that like we're, we're looking for that. I mean, people tend to panic. So they call them paper hands where like as soon as they see a dip, you know. So they, would they you sell. say it's a good idea to invest a lot? Like let's say I got 20 racks. To, to keep them separate. So buy so, like different. Don't put, so don't all, put your all your eggs. 20 in one. Like if you, if you have, let's say five racks, don't put all of it in one. Just divide them because. You know, if one's winning, you can, you know. Do you know people that do it the other way? 
And they just go say, fuck it, I'm gonna buy See, 50 the racks worth of shares in this. Saw, bro. Saw got me into this like crypto thing and stuff. And shout out to him for that. But Saw had he kept because he 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 taught me about Bitcoin and shit. So when he taught me about Bitcoin, this was before the whole pandemic thing. Picture this, bro. How crazy. So when the pandemic um was starting to blow up, crypt, uh, Bitcoin was at like seven racks. Seven, seven racks, right? So if he would have bought one, put seven racks towards Bitcoin, by now he would have quadruple he would have had like a good 50k call saw fuck it <laughs> uh let me see if he's at work uh, uh okay okay uh let me call him real quick because you, can, you can have him give a little breakdown of what's going on with the whole crypto stuff and yes so let's give my guy a call real quick i'll be right back low 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 you checking the cams all right bad, bad, bad. so we're gonna go ahead uh when i think with this we should wrap it up huh so Let's go ahead and give my guy a call real quick. So if you guys are really looking into getting into cryptocurrency, this shit is the future. It's amazing how obviously we have the internet too. So take keep an eye on Twitter. Keep an eye on uh, TikTok as well. You know what I'm saying? Because that's where the memes, the, the, the you know, stay away from the pump and dumps. The people that are saying that buy this coin because it's going to blow up and you don't know shit about that coin. Do your research because I see these. TikTokers that think they're tick, they're crypto gurus and shit, and they don't know shit. They're just telling you to pump so they can get their money and take your money and then fucking end up dumping it and shit. You know what I'm saying? So we're going to get to it. Mm. I'm about to call my guy in a minute, but I want to thank everybody that supported the movement. If you guys are fucking with this segment, please let us know. Comment down below on the YouTube channel. If you're listening to us on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, make sure to just go on Instagram or go on YouTube and say, hey, I like what you guys are doing, the revamp. We're still going to have guests, but it's going to be at our own pace. We want to have fun with this. We want to keep the content going, and I think this is the right way to go. You know what I'm saying? So uh, we're going to call my guy Saul, and he is he's the one that got me into cryptocurrency, Bitcoin, and it's crazy. It's crazy. So let me go ahead and hit, hit my guy up. Yo, what up, Holmes? Are you busy? No. Okay, cool. Uh, you're, we're on the podcast. We're testing out the calls, so you're you're you're, you're going to be recorded here on the podcast. Uh, so uh, we want to talk about cryptocurrency and stuff. So uh, I'm away from my guy AV because he's he went to the restroom and stuff. But how you been, bro? How you doing? I'm good, bro. Hell yeah, man. Hell yeah. We're going to talk about you know the whole movement from the moment you got me into the cryptocurrency and. <laughs> the, the it, it, crazy like because i think that's one of those where it's like it's it can be tricky right you know the whole managing your money you don't want to lose it but you also want to make some big gains so uh let's talk about it man let's talk about first of all let's talk about last night you know they everybody was expecting elon to get on it you know uh did you watch that show or were you were you were you uh oh, yeah. so what, what what went down that everybody started selling dogecoin they started panicking and well, shit I think I think the biggest thing is that he didn't really talk about it in the sense that it was going to pump the coin. Everybody was expecting him to take to the moon or something along mm -hmm. those lines, but I feel like he, you know, his mother made a joke about it. Okay. And, cause, uh, yeah, because the thing is... That's what it did. Because mm, the, the thing is, the whole thing was like... Uh, Elon Musk was going to go on the uh, Saturday Night Live, yeah. and everybody was expecting Deutsch to hit a dollar. It was at 60, around 60, right? So everybody was expecting Deutsch to hit a dollar, and then when he got on the show, it didn't happen. So it, like, the coin dipped from like 65, almost to 70, all the way down to like 40. Oh, shit. So a lot of people were losing money if you didn't cash out. And last night, this was last, last night. night. Last oh, night. so my boy Carter, he should have cashed out. <laughs> yeah. So, uh, what did you end up doing? Saul? did you cash out? I cashed out, but I still lost about 150. Uh, I think I gained some, some of it back this morning. I lost about 150 too. Yeah. So, but I rebought. Bad, I That's the thing. I rebought, I rebought at 55, which was a big mistake because after I bought it dipped down, but I bought also at 46. No, see, you got me. I think I bought up again at around 52. But, so, yeah, so, what, on the plaza. What, is, what are your predictions as far as doggy? Where does it go? I mean, it's very, it, it's one of those coins that unless a, bait, a major company 
decides to take on to it and not just like you know to buy tickets or or memorabilia for like the Mavericks game or something like that because that's where it's coming now but i think unless uh amazon or a big company decides to take it on to accept it as a payment mm -hmm. it's not going to move ahead from a, a actual currency that has real life value like bitcoin is a global currency mm -hmm. ethereum is a global currency yeah uh dogecoin has the potential to do to do that because it's, it's the infrastructure is the same you know it, you can send and receive payments you can you can track it. You can, it's mm -hmm. basically the same concept as any other cryptocurrency, but it, it's going to take for a big company to start uh, mm -hmm. making a move for it to make some major gains. But I think, I think, we, I think right. in my opinion, I think it's in the right path because, like you said, like, uh, you know, if you want to go to a Dallas game, uh, a Mavericks game, you can pay with big with Deutschcoin and it's in oh, yeah. billboards now and in, in Times Square like you know it, the Deutschcoin is making its way so I think it's in the right direction I don't think it's going to dip drastically like as far as going down to seven cents or something I think it stays anywhere from 30 no. to 60 in that range until something yeah. big happens where it just spikes up to a dollar that's where I think it's going to you know oh yeah it, def it definitely has the volume to be able to be a, a major coin you know it's just uh, acceptance. Uh, right now, it's like all the internet hype, the redditors, the, the the basically younger kids are believe in this because it's it's like, like for most people, it's the very first coin that they use to get themselves introduced to the cryptocurrency. So it's it's more it's got a follow up that it's not it's unlike Bitcoin or anything mm -hmm. else. And most of the the early Bitcoin investors were basically just like nerdy guys, computer science guys um, that got involved into that technology at the beginning. This is a completely different movement. It's a global movement behind, you know, techie kids or techie teenagers that are like getting involved in investing and they see Elon Musk as their Tony Stark in the real world, basically. That's you know? wild. That and is, yeah. So... It definitely has potential, you know what I mean, to become a major coin. It just has to get more traction from a major company to be able to be like, okay, cool, it's here to stay. I think it's amazing, you know? bro, because at the end of the day, it's like we're in the, it, believe it or not, we're in the early stages of cryptocurrency. And, it, you know, there's not enough data yet to kind of see, yeah. but we're in it early. So I think it's going to be the future. So if, if we're early investors and shit, and we're looking at these new coins that are coming out and, you know, I think oh, yeah. it's amazing. You know, it's going to make a couple of millionaires if you do play it out right. You know what I'm oh, saying? Yeah. So, so, it's, um, it's honestly, the, it's honestly the mm -hmm. medium to where that is going to allow a lot of people to become millionaires in the future. It's going to be a, uh, a financial shift from like a drastic financial shift, in my opinion. There's so many middle class and, and poor class people that are becoming wealthy overnight mm -hmm. for this. Yeah, it's crazy. So, Saul, I had a question for you, man. What's up, by the way? What's going on, man? Um, could you explain to the people kind of what crypto is and just like like crypto for dummies type shit? You know what I'm saying? Crypto for dummies. So, I actually made a, I was gonna think, I was thinking about making a post on Snapchat about this because I've been getting a lot of people asking me about inflation and about like, you know, why is everything going up in price and things like that. So, I'll make it short and simple. Um, I'm going to do a comparison between modern banking and what cryptocurrency is. Okay. Right? So basically, all the banks are um, are the ones that are that control the federal bank. There's nothing federal about the federal bank. It's basically a conglomerate of the major regional banks across the United States. So it's about 150 pages of different banks that basically form the federal bank and they determine the rates. And they determine how much the value of the dollar is. When the government wants to print some money, they, they you know they basically contact the federal bank, make some notes, and basically money is added to the system. So they're basically printing money. There's no nothing that that states okay. Well, we're gonna back it by the gold like it used to be back in the day. Hmm. So in essence, the the U.S. economy is. It's based on the value of the dollar that keeps depreciating. And because so, because of that, and that what creates creates the inflation, correct? Correct. So like, and it's very alarming because the inflation rate right now has spiked to about two point six percent. And what that means to the average person is that your dollar has dropped in value from January to February. So now at an alarming rate, which is why when you go pump some gas, gas is up. 
and you go get some bread, the bread has gone up in price quite a bit. You want to buy a house, house prices have gone up because the lumber has gone yeah. up, you know, skyrocketed. And, and everything's going up in price. The scary thing too, so saw is like the, the wages just keep staying the same as price keep going up. So yep. that's kind of scary. Yep. yep. So what's happening is that the dollar keeps appreciating in value. And like, for example, whenever, like, I'll give you an example, like there's a shortage on cars right now because the, the computers that are used to be able to fabricate these cars are built overseas where your dollars, it's not worth as much as it was last year. So when they're trying to buy those products or those, you know, those, uh, minerals or whatever it is to, to take these to to build these it's going to take a lot more money to buy that because you know the uk basically uh, the like the japanese yen and the, the british pounds are worth more than the u.s now Sheesh. so it takes more money to buy the same, the same product therefore it costs more for the american market to buy these things so that's the problem with modern banking is that the Federal Reserve Bank basically can say, okay, we just need more money. Let's go ahead and print it. And then they keep printing it. And what happens is it, it depreciates the value. That's the same thing that's happened in Argentina and Venezuela and Colombia. So the more money is being printed, the less it's worth. It. Now, their economy crashed at around 3 to 4% roughly, right? So what that means is that we're right behind them. And you know, it's scary it's because like when you see documentaries on YouTube about like Argentina or Colombia, Venezuela, they're, they're literally using their, their local currency as, you know, to, as, as a napkin because it's not worth anything. You see people that are like going to work for two weeks, making money, their little paycheck, and then they have to change it to a currency of some sort to maintain their value. That way they, they can make the rent at the end of the month. So you see, you see this problem on a global scale. Scary. What it's cryptocurrency scary. does, it solves that issue. You have a global network of computers that basically maintain the value of the cryptocurrency. And any changes to the network, uh, basically the, the chain, uh, the, the, the entire network has to be approved by the entire global system. So it's not like the U.S. can say, okay, let's change it to benefit us. Or China can mm -hmm. change something in the code to benefit China. They can't do that, right? And then every single transaction is allocated in the in, in this ledger, public ledger, that everybody can see. So it literally replaces the problem with banking that where you have banks that create money out of thin air mm. um, to be able to print in their books and to issue loans. <clears throat> so cryptocurrency basically solves the modern banking system in a sense that it gives the power to the people on how much Bitcoin is going to be worth. Mm. And then you can use it to send or receive money globally at a fraction of the cost. So, Saul, let me ask you are this. You, how how yeah. likely is for is it for Bitcoin to crash? Because that's one thing that people are Bitcoin. like, uh, that I know, they're like, what if I put my money in that shit and then it's just like gone out of nowhere or some so, shit? So, Bitcoin is going to go up and down, up and down. Like, if you look at the, at the three-year mark, five-year mark, 10-year mark, it's always going to go up and down. And it's got some high spikes. Like the last spike was a few years back and it's like oh, up to $20,000 that people blow, were blowing their minds because they didn't believe that Bitcoin was going to be worth that much. And and if everybody started catching out and it, and it crashed back down. But the difference back then was that the hype was done to like social media online and it wasn't corporate investors, right? So whenever people started cashing out, everybody was like, oh, okay, kind of like what happened last night on Dogecoin. Doge Dogecoin, they're like, oh, Elon Musk didn't say, didn't say what he was supposed to, and everybody started cashing out, and everybody panicked and sold. Well, the difference now is that Bitcoin has a massive amount of uh, corporate investors. You have big companies like MicroStrategy. Mm -hmm. You have big companies like PayPal, like Square. Uh, you have, you know, companies that have a lot of money. Uh, banks are, are creating uh, Bitcoin ETF to create portfolios for retirement. So they're buying millions of dollars. Every time that you see a big spike on Bitcoin, more often than not, if you do your research, it's because uh, some company bought millions of dollars worth. So mm. those companies are scrutinized because Bitcoin is considered property. So they can't just sell it overnight. They can't just say, oh, you know, 
Elon Musk didn't, didn't advertise the cryptocurrency, so let's just sell out. They can't do that. It has to go through the board of directors. It has to go through approvals, they, you know, because it, create it creates a massive gain uh, movement in the market. So oh. I don't think for I don't think for a fact that Bitcoin is ever going to go down like it did or dip down like it did before. It's going to have big big spikes like 10, 15 percent, sometimes even 20 percent uh, ups and downs. But that's the retail investors, the average me and you, you know, buying stuff on Robinhood, on Coinbase, or on Voyager and apps like that. Um, you know, we're just trading basically a couple thousand dollars and then because of the internet you create a hype and then that's where you see those ups and downs. I don't think Bitcoin is ever gonna go back down to to the ten thousand, twenty thousand or three thousand mark ever. Uh, it will probably drop down to like maybe high fifties, you know, low fifties. But if anything is forecast that Bitcoin as more retail and uh, corporate <clears throat> investors are gonna start putting more money into it, it's by the end of the year it's they believe it's going to go well above hundred thousand dollars. All right, Saul. It's not going away. Let me ask you this, um, and then we'll go ahead and wrap this up because I got somebody that's going to meet us up. Uh, now, ten years from now, if Bitcoin becomes the main crypto, <laughs> the main currency of the world, do you think that solves the problem of the valuation of dollars in other countries and you know the economy? Does do you think it fixes it on a global scale? Yes and no. So Bitcoin is the basically the gold of digital currency right mm -hmm. now as far as a, a being a system uh, a coin that has been developed and set up for global scale i think ethereum has a higher chance of being able to do that mm -hmm. ethereum has the options to be able to do lending to be able to do loans to be able to do uh financing uh to be able to do nfts and all that stuff so their code is far more advanced than bitcoin is Mm. And uh, it, Ethereum, if I, if I were to guess 10 years from now, it's going to be what's going to take over the financial uh, infrastructure of uh, global financing. That's where I got my, all my uh, money. I mean, you're already seeing it. Yeah, yeah, hell yeah. Well, shit, man. Uh, appreciate you for giving us the insight, man. We're definitely going to get you in actual podcast because I do want to talk about AI and how it's going to become the future and shit. So be on the lookout for that, brother. Thanks, right, Saul. But thank you, Saul, man. You All have right, a great day, man. Blessings, and uh, we'll keep in touch, brother. All right, bro. All right, bro. So there you have it, ladies and gentlemen. I think this was one hell of a podcast. This was fun, bro. How, what do you think? I fuck with it. I fucks with it. You know, this new concept of just, like, calling people and, you know. Giving. So now we can have multiple guests at one time. Yeah. It's, it's like, certain topics. So what we're going to be doing is uh, definitely give us uh, feedback on uh, what other shit should we talk about in the next podcast? We're going to post stories and polls on the Instagram. So stay on the lookout for that. We're going to be a lot more active. But I think that's it, man. I love the concept. So y'all stay tuned for the next one. And I guess we'll catch you guys on the next one. Peace. Peace.